I'm just going to go through this is the news from the Lordstown uh, website. I'll have you know there's a lot of sources on this where you can track this activity, look at these PDFs, download the PDF of this, and also check um, NASDAQ for any filings that may be there. And uh, there is a, a, a link here to a service where you can track these court proceedings. But let me just uh give you an idea of of what's going on we all know that um, foxconn after uh, a number of iterations uh canceled their deal which was negotiated uh to provide funding and also uh to um get the uh, endurance uh, into production and also to produce a actually the endurance was in production uh, it is a certified homologated vehicle um, in any case um, so uh, as a result of the funding being canceled the 173 million i believe that were to be the proceeds from that stock deal lordstown motors um filed bankruptcy and this is after a reverse split was done to satisfy the terms of that agreement or the demands of foxconn at which time they still balked at the contract and um, like afterwards lordstown stock fell precipitously received a delisting notice now just uh to look at these highlights here, uh, there, Lordstein is claiming that uh, Foxconn had committed fraud, bad faith, and repeated contract breaches leading to value destruction. I think that is very, very evident by the evidence. We haven't heard much of anything from Foxconn on any of this, except the ludicrous demand to quadruple the amount of stock uh, they were going to be awarded for uh, under the terms of the uh, agreement that they had signed. Um, there, as part of this uh, renewal uh, bankruptcy, uh, they're going to sell the endurance truck and related EV assets. So uh, again, we're going to mention this later, but this is a full I mean, this this is a vehicle. This is a homologated, certified vehicle, ready to go. Um, just to mention that um, Lordstown is debt-free and continues to operate with significant cash on hand. So I'm not certain of the exact number, but I do believe they had about $200 million or so cash on hand. And uh, when you file Chapter 11, then your creditors are, uh, you know, that you stop payments until there's a reorganization. So they're frozen uh, with expenditures at zero and cash on hand at approximately $200 million. So they do have some leeway to operate there. Okay, and just a few more details here. Lordstown today, litigation against Foxconn, or Han Hai Group, Terry Gao. As a consequence of Foxconn's material, material and irreparable harm, Lordstown is commencing a comprehensive marketing and sale process for the endurance vehicle and related assets. That would be the hub motor uh, production line also the ip i would imagine related to the hub motors will have to see um they're going to provide a pr prospective buyer with a going concern asset that is free and clear of legacy issues so um you know that is the deal of the century for someone um i am not going to speculate on how the shareholders will end up in this um you know they're well i'm just not going to say anything because i am not qualified please see your financial financial professional i'm not saying anything okay 
Um, Edward Hightower, Foxconn willfully and repeatedly failed to execute the agreed upon strategy, leaving us with Chapter 11 as the only viable option to maximize the value of Lord Stunt's assets for the benefit of our shareholders. Again, shareholders. We will vigorously pursue our litigation against Foxconn accordingly. And how a positive outcome on any lawsuit would affect shareholders, I again am not going to speculate on. If there's an attorney that wants to make a comment in the, in the comments on this video, please do so. I have my own private opinions. I'm not going to share them, guys. You got to you got to figure this out yourself. Foxconn fraud, bad faith, and repeated contractual breaches irreparably harm Lordstown, according to the complaint. And let me just break away from this document for a second. I, I just want to talk to a few current events that I think play into this. First of all, let's just say this is a giant rug pull by Foxconn. Um, was it to get the gain control of the hub motor tech? I know under the terms of the agreement, uh, there was some, uh, some backdoor uh, methods, and you guys can read the filings on those agreements, where they could have taken uh, control. I think, uh, Foxconn's board has always maintained that, uh, whoever's doing this, they have to have a plan B in their plans. But anyway, this is a rug pull by Foxconn. I think uh, let's look at the bigger picture here. Let's pull back in Google Maps and look at what's going on. You know, the Apple headset is bombing, okay? They've cut production numbers in half on that. Um, they're saying it's too hard to build. I imagine Foxconn will be in the loop on that, and that is going to hurt their revenue. Also, the iPhone sales are bombing right now with the um, you know recession and so forth and lack of compelling products uh you know repetitious minor improvements iterations um also foxconn just announced that they ended they they had signed again a massive chip deal with another company in india to produce uh silicon chips and they have pulled out of that deal you know apple's goal is to move production to india and foxconn has been operating in india as well uh, but uh so foxconn is is bailing uh, apple uh, not so good the headset landed with a thud although everyone's impressed with it they're saying it's too complex to build or at least that's the excuse for sales being cut in half. Um, and Foxconn sales are down 14%. So, in this last quarter. So, you know, Foxconn has got bad news on a lot of fronts. Um, you could say bad management. Um, or, you know, bad macro, but... Anyway, that's what the state of affairs is with Foxconn. Now, I just want to mention that, you know, we've all been thinking about the Apple car in the back of our minds, and I think everybody is feeling that it, at some point Foxconn is going to be involved in manufacturing the Apple car if it ever comes out. You know, the question I have in my mind, and, you know, I talked to some individuals off, off the record in casual situations from apple and uh, the apple car uh i want to say it's on hold it's not on hold but they really went for the headset uh anyway uh, that was the opinion of the guy i talked to and i think uh, during covid they thought maybe covid was going to go on forever and everybody was going to be living in you know constantly gaming and zooming each other with these headsets on and never look at another human again anyway this this also may be a factor okay um apple's lack of progress on the apple car and the bombing of their headset and i'm going to call it a bomb 
although I think it's wonderful tech and it's beautifully made, but again, they always say we're going to create the market. We don't build do marketing and build a product based on marketing surveys. Well, evidently not much of a market for that. You know, Meta has basically dropped their headset. So I think Apple laid an egg with that one. That's the new Newton. Anyway, in regards to this bankruptcy, I just want to mention that, you know, one of the main expenses besides legal now uh, is the rent that Lordstown Motors pays to Foxconn for housing the hub motor production facility. Now that is that line and that technology and that machinery is owned by Lordstown, as I understand it. I think it certainly is. And they are paying rent to Fox. So that's one good thing that's coming out of this is they're not paying Fox. Foxconn's getting zero rent from them. Bully, bully for Lordstown. So we can look at it that way. Now, as far as uh, Lordstown selling uh, the Endurance. And by the way, I apologize for not getting that review of the Endurance out. Um, not going to make excuses. Blew my knee out. But uh, I'm hoping to get that completed, even, even uh, uh, post-bankruptcy, to get an idea of what the truck really is like. But the idea is, you know... Can they can they uh, can they sell it? You know, does it have a value? And I think that Audi uh, just agreed to buy EV platforms from Neo, so they are going to buy the whole. You know, they have basically thrown in the towel and doing their own engineering. They're too far behind. They're gonna they're gonna contract with with Neo now. This was just announced. So. Uh, is there a market for the endurance? Yes. Was there always a market for the endurance? Yes. Is endurance a viable product? Yes. I think um, it's confounding this outcome. I think uh, it, you know, it determined, it, it, it requires, you know, there's a lot of investigation that should be done here. But, um, in any case, uh, the the whole thing is 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 kind of uh, mind mind numbing. <laughs> now, I just want to say I don't want to speculate on the outcome for uh, shareholders, but there was uh, a spurt of buying uh, before the delisting. Um, so, whether that was an ill-informed squeeze or something else, you again, you guys. You have to read the SEC releases and now these court releases, and you have to seek, seek professional guidance on this. I am just here to report as much as I can and, and uh, opine a little bit, but uh, I am simply not qualified to, to comment on the status of these things. And uh, I'm going to go through the rest of this document here real quickly now moving on here i just want to read these highlighted sections here foxconn simply used its variety of contractual arrangements with the company as a tool to ma maliciously and in bad faith <clears throat> destroy lordstown's business while leveraging resources gained through the partnership to advance its own interests and uh, in retrospect, that may be true, although I think um, there were good intentions. At some point, they turned bad. And I think uh, those facts are going to come out why that happened and when that happened. Um, you know, Lord Center seeking uh, authority commence a comprehensive marketing and sale process under the bankruptcy code uh, to realize the full value of the innovative endurance vehicle and related assets. The endurance is fully homologated and certified and production ready vehicle. Okay, this is crazy. Um, 
It's a springboard for the righty OEM and other strategic person uh, purchaser, full size truck market. At, you know, this this would allow someone like you know Audi's going to to uh, Neo. Okay, now if Audi Audi wants to put out an electric pickup truck, well here it is. Okay, they've gone to Neo. Uh, in the broader North American full-size truck market, at a fraction of the cost and time it would take to develop a program from the ground ground up. Again, Audi's uh, gone to Neo, and just as an example, I have no information on this, but of course, you know, this is another, you know, if, if, if they or a company like them wanted to do the same thing to get into pickup trucks, this is the answer. Uh, the, conf uh, the company is confident that a buyer could utilize the endurance platform to create multiple EV variants and take the product to the next level. And, and those variants are the three-row SUV and the delivery van, which really are have been on the drawing board from day one. Um, again, the uh, amount of lost opportunity here um it's kind of the unreality of this situation okay i just want to close this out with some comments over these uh, video segments on the endurance and what a great looking truck it is um you know i'm gonna put my tinfoil hat on here i just have to say that we, i think one would be foolish uh to think that um, this turn of events, the Hindenburg uh, attacks on Lordstown, and then on Carl Icahn, a potential white knight, um, just too much, too much to explain rationally. And um, not a political channel, not supporting any particular candidate here, but I think that... Um, at least part, I don't know what percentage, of this outcome is related to um, Donald Trump's uh, campaign for president. And um, I think, uh, you know, you could put your tinfoil hat on. You can make an argument and say, hey, the powers that be want to... Uh, Give uh, Donald Trump a black eye. They don't want him to have a victory with his industrial policy because, of course, he did have a lot to do with the start of the endurance. Absolutely. And now, of course, the whole company and the product has been six or ten times removed from that. Now it's gone through a lot of iterations and a lot of different things. But um, I think you'd be foolish not to think uh, that... Uh, uh, that at least had some some role to play here. I don't know. Maybe a small role. I did, and I've been searching for the article. If somebody can find it in the comments, uh, I did see an article where the Biden administration, again, not to take sides here, not a political channel, was, uh, you know, um, having some issues with Foxconn. Um so whether that has anything to do with this, I have no idea. I cannot find that source. Uh, I have it somewhere or it's been deleted. But in any case, uh, may or may not be true. That's just uh, in my opinion there. But um, certainly, um, everyone, please uh, do your own DD on this. Seek professional guidance. Uh, if you download the PDF of that statement, there's a link in it to a website that will track every everything that's going on in this lawsuit. So you can keep perfectly up to date. So go to the news section. Go to this piece. Uh, there's a link in the top right to download the PDF. In that PDF, there is a link to a site to track all this activity. This is MXUX. Good luck in the market. This is MXUX. Um...
just a note to my subscribers i have not been commenting on the activities related to lordstown motors because i'm simply not an attorney or a financial advisor and i just cannot give advice on these topics um I hope everyone understands that, and I hope everyone seeks professional advice when they're dealing with um, this issue the company's facing.